Hey, what's up YouTube? This is Iconic here with Organic Chemistry Made Simple and in this video we're going to talk about hybridization. So basically what is hybridization? It's just a way to rationalize, way to show how atoms, how binding works between different atoms. Um, like the idea behind a hybrid, hybridization, is you're taking two things and you're combining it to make a hybrid. In, the, in chemistry we're talking about taking S orbitals and combining them with p orbitals to make a uh, sp hybrid. So this is the idea behind it. In order for us to understand this more, I'm going to use carbon as an example. Carbon being the central atom in organic chemistry. We know that carbon likes to make four different, I mean can make four different bonds with four different atoms, say hydrogen, whatever, right, you know. Now, from the subway of hydrogen, my bad, hydrogen. So from, <coughs> before we go into how carbon can make uh, four different bonds, let's go into the electron configuration of carbon. This is something from Gen Chem, which you know is 1s2, 2s2, and 2p2. Since the 1s2, this is the internal orbital, we're not going to look at that, but rather, rather the valence electrons, this is what really matters. Now, showing this on an energy diagram, the s orbital is right about, about here, right? And the p orbital over here, right? The p being at a higher energy. Now, normally since in the, since in the s we have two electrons, so we'll just show that right here. And in the p orbitals, we have also two electrons. Now, carbon being in this state, we can make only uh, two bond, we can make carbon bonded to only two other atoms. Because say for an oxygen, if oxygen wants to come and bind to carbon, oxygen can take one of its electrons and bind over here, right? Or bind over here. So this being said, carbon can only make two bonds but we want to make carbon be able to make four bonds as I showed you right over here so how do we go that that how do we get to that point this is where the hybridization comes in this is where we the amount of energy there will be some energy that's required and that energy will take this s and the p orbital and will combine them and which will allow to make which will put carbon in such a state where it can make four bonds now I know this sounds confusing so let me I'll show you how the, what I'm talking about, and it'll make sense. Let me let me erase this quickly. So, in order for carbon to make four different bonds, like I showed over here, it needs to make a sp hybrid. So we have the s orbital right here, and oh, camera got tilted. We have the s. We have the s and the p right over here so like I said before in the S we had two electrons and in the P we had two electrons but the example goes before I had it I showed it like this and then one two but the example goes if this electron right here if there's a free space an empty orbital right over here it, it rather would prefer to be over there instead combined with another one and the example that's been given is like if you have a extra room in your house why would you want to share it with your sibling so that's why this electron it would come over here now we can see carbon it's in a sp hybrid and with any other atom uh, another atom can come with that electron it can bond over here it can bond over here it can bond over here and over here so you get the idea now we what we did over here is we took one s and three p and we made a sp, what we call a sp3 hybridization. Now I'll show you an example and it'll make more sense. And there's a simple rule, there's a simple rule to hybridization and this is the rule. Let me give you an example of a sp3 hybridization. Right? You have carbon CH4 which is methane Now the questions that you'll see on your exam is for a certain atom, right? Say this carbon, what is the hybridization? 
that's that's your question what is the hybridization now the simple rule that I, I written is how to go about telling what hybridization is you look at the number of attached atoms plus the number of lone pairs and depending on what that number is is it be sp2 sp3 and so on so for this carbon how many lone pairs does it have none how many number of attached atoms it has one two three four it has four attached atoms therefore this is a sp3 hybridization P pretty simple right now let's go look into um, another example of what about yeah let's go look into sp hybridization so let's do carbon monoxide C double O this being negative positive okay so now you might be asked what is the hybridization of this carbon right um, same same thing just follow the simple rule number of attached atoms well don't worry about the double bond look at the how many atoms are bonded to this carbon so we have one which is oxygen and how many lone pairs does, how many lone pairs does <coughs> does it have carbon has one lone pair so it has one lone pair one attached atom so that's two so this is sp hybridization now let's look at sp2 hybridization So now imagine on your exam, you're asked, what is the hybridization of this central carbon right over here? Again, set, just follow this simple rule, right? Number of attached atoms. Well, this carbon is attached to this carbon, and this carbon, and this oxygen. So it's attached to three atoms, right? How many lone pairs does it have? Zero. So this is a, it's attached to three Right, and no lone pair, so this is a sp2 hybridization. Now, um, generally, in terms of, uh, so this is the simple rule. You just look at the number of attached atoms, number, number of lone pairs, and you'll be able to figure it out. So now, just on your own, I'm going to leave this on your own. Figure out what is the hybridization of this ox uh, oxygen in water. What is the hybridization of the oxygen in water? And um, this is something um, I'll let you guys, it's just an example, I'll let you guys figure it out. And the answer I'll put inside the, in the description. Um, when we're talking about bond angles, anything that's usually, um, anything that's an S pre hybridization, it's usually like the uh, carbon monoxide, it's usually at 180 degree, 80 degrees. Uh, anything that's sp2 it's usually 120 and anything that's uh, sp3 the bond angle is 109.5 so in for one sp is you have carbon monoxide right this bond angle is 180 degrees like you can see it's just flat 180 degrees for sp2 what was the example that I did all oh, right here C double O and then this is CH3 CH3 right so this right here this bond angle that I'm showing you right here this is um, this is 120 degrees right over here 120 and for SP3 right it's it's in a SP3 it's a 109.5 right here let me show you how it looks right here and imagine these are all hydrogens. So the bond angle that I'm showing over here is 109.5. This is in terms of bond angle, which is not really that important. Um, yeah, so basically that's it for that's it for hybridization. Uh, um, just simply, it's a way of uh, to summarize. It's a way of showing how bonding works when atoms they don't want to bond in a certain way so we make a hybrid in order to get them you know get them to bond with other molecules other atoms and 
if you want to find the hybridization of any atom, whether it be oxygen, carbon, you just follow this simple rule, number of attached atoms plus number of lone pairs. And depending on what that is, it's SP, SP2, SP3, and so on. So that's it for this video. Um, if you guys have any questions, please leave it in the comment section below, and I'll see you guys next time.